Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are currently preparing to transfer this on over to Gilly. And the question is, how do we want to reposition everything on here? Now, mostly things are fine, I think. I would like to think about moving the fuel out of here, but where do we put it? There's a lot of fuel already on this station that we just kind of got for free-ish. So, I mean, we can put a little bit of fuel up over here. That's a possibility. I believe we have more than enough fuel to get to Gilly, as it is. So I don't believe that we need any additional, like, tanker missions or anything like that. And this being a little bit off-kilter is kind of funny to me. I don't know. It's this one that's the problem. We could try to fix it, but that sounds like work. So I'm not going to do that for right now. We need to think about how we're going to transit over... And then how we're going to land. So obviously our mass distribution is not even, right? Our mass distribution is not right here. It's kind of... I, I don't know what it actually is, but it's probably more along the lines of here or so. If I had to guess. So that's a potential concern, for sure. I do think that we ditch these two tanks and the mainsail here. I think that those will be gotten rid of, and we're ultimately going to be removing probably this docking port here. Replacing that with one of our poodles. It doesn't really matter which one. We'll shut down this one, I guess. Actually, we'll shut down all of our engines for right now. There we go. Cool. However, if we can't store this fuel anywhere, then we should use this mainsail until it burns out. And we should not have crossfeed through here. And we don't. Good. Okay, so that's ideal. In that case, we should burn all of this out and then undock and then reconfigure. Noted. So we're not going to be doing any of this right now, right? That's definitely a thing we're not going to do. So let's prepare for a transfer over to the moon. We would like to get something kind of over here-ish, I'm guessing. We just want to get a nice little... There we go, gravity assist, like that. Cool. That should do. Is this an impact trajectory? No, it is not. Okay, let's head over to the Maneuver Node. So we have a lot of SAS on this. We also have a lot of RCS, which may or may not be necessary. Cool. And this is definitely... I keep saying this one is off. It's not. It's this one that's off. But that'll be less of a big deal later on. So we'll position for this burn, and we'll see how this goes. And then we'll have quite a lot of time as we travel to work on our next steps here. So this is 768.3 meters per second, or one minute and five seconds of burn. This is definitely inaccurate. Okay. We'll see how much of this we end up burning off, but let's just warp on around. I want to use up all of this fuel as our, like, first step here. And of course, we're going to look to ditch these tanks eventually. They are not going to be landing with us, as we can tell by the fact that they don't have any landing gear. So that should be fine, and we're going to prepare for this burn. So let's warp on forward a little bit here. Another 40, 30, 20, 10 seconds. 3, 2, boy that second felt really long, 1, and mark. Okay. So that went very poorly. Noted. So we're going to need to get some additional strutting done here. Okay. I'm not hugely shocked about that. We knew that there would be some significant issues to burning this due to our mass distribution. However, the primary issue, I believe was not necessarily due to the mass distribution so much as it was due... And are we controlling from here? 
We should be controlling from, from, from like this cupola module. That would help. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's get set back up here. And let's thrust limit this guy on down. We'll try like 15% thrust and see if we're able to hold attitude with that. And yes, we need to start this burn a while ago if we're going to do that. But it's okay for now. We can always adjust the burn later on en route. So let's just get in position see in position here and see how this goes. Now the mainsail is too powerful for what we want here. This is definitely better. It's not good. But it's better. Okay. That's going to be a pretty lengthy burn. No doubt about that, but at 15% thrust, it appears to be okay. Let's try bumping it up to 20% thrust. Definitely picking up a roll there. But a roll isn't the end of the world. Okay. We could try going up to like 30% thrust and seeing what happens. I think it was mostly the shock of propelling it early on. But we're definitely falling off of the marker at 30% thrust. So for the moment, we're going to chill on 20% thrust, it seems. And I'm going to turn RCS on here to try to get us back onto the marker. Okay, RCS is now going off as we get back into position here. Cool. I don't feel like we can physics warp this, so I don't think we're going to be assembling these in orbit in the future, for the record. I also don't think that we're going to be getting this surface outpost. It must be fully assembled when launched. That's okay for now. We can build something that can theoretically count. Does that have to be on wheels? Yeah, it has to be on wheels. Okay. 5,000 units of ore. Okay. ISRU converter. 16 Kerbals. It's going to be a tall boy, but sure, whatever. For the time being, that's reasonably fine. This is going to be a lengthy burn. An unfortunately lengthy burn. So we could try 25% thrust and see how that feels. We're pulling off of the marker. Checking 22.5. We're still pulling off of the marker. I'm not sure if that is actually momentum issues or if that is an actual unable to SAS this. Let's see. So I turned the RCS to bring us back to the marker. And we're going to run out of fuel here fairly soon. So that's reasonably fine. So how much more are we going to need here? Well, for, for one thing, we can see that we're definitely pulling off here. That's fine. We know that there's a mass distribution issue here, right? 100%. We know that for a fact. I'm turning the RCS back on. Okay. And then I think we're going to run this engine here for a bit. So, we're going to be running out of fuel here shortly. As we make our way back. This is definitely not an efficient way to do things. But I wanted to get this dealt with. Okay. So, let's get all of this fuel out of here. 70 more liquid fuel in each tank. 50. 40. 
Turn our RCS off for the moment. We are going to control from here. Uh, actually, no, this is the one that's not on axis. So we're going to control from here. Okay. And then we're going to be turning this engine on. And we are going to need to move that engine. No doubt about that. Okay. I feel like we're cruising pretty quick here. But let's just chill here for the moment. And this is definitely going to be pretty off in terms of timing, but we'll see what we've got. And can we run this at full thrust? And that's the question. The answer is a definite maybe. Seems to be going reasonably well at full thrust. Okay. I really don't think that we should physics warp. <laughs> I really, really don't think we should. Now, strutting these together might not be a bad idea. When we're reworking some of this stuff, we'll probably end up doing that. Just to have it so that it's not, you know, this is currently bending here. A little bit. This is bending more, but it's fine. We appear to be able to hold this attitude, so that's what's important. And off we go to the moon. So we've got plenty of fuel in this, right? I'm not concerned about our amount of fuel. We're actually not pulling from here. Do we have crossfeed disabled here? I'm not sure where we have our crossfeed disabled. We're not pulling from this fuel tank, I don't think. Well, maybe we are but not at the rate that we're pulling from these other tanks. That's for sure. It's okay. It's completely fine. We can manually do that. So we're going to move this on over and get in position for our flyby of the moon. It's very awkward. No doubt about that. Timing is not great. But we'll get there. And then we're going to make some modifications to this thing to make this work a lot better in the future. Cool. So, we've got about another two minutes on this burn. We could attempt a physics warp. I'm definitely going to quick save before we try that. Yikes. This is a 2x physics warp here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's not great. I don't think I like the 2x physics warp. We could try to roll into a slightly better attitude, but I think it's fine. We're just going to finish up this push burn here, and then we're going to make some modifications. It's going to be over a day before we escape from the moon, right? So we'll have some time there. And we do have some leftover struts, I believe, in here somewhere. Yeah, so we can definitely strut these together. That'll be fine, and something we should probably end up doing. So that's definitely noted, and we will do so as soon as this burn is over. We're also going to move this engine as soon as the burn is over. We will ditch this Clampatron docking port senior or deposit it in here if we can, but I'd be a little surprised if this could be stored. It's a big part. So we'll see. But we've got about two minutes left on this burn. This is definitely not awkward in the slightest. But this will get us escaped from Kerbin, so we'll have plenty of time to work on getting this all moved around as we drift on over. Yeah, we're definitely not pulling from this tank, and I'm not sure why right now. But one of these presumably has disabled crossfeed. I guess. I don't know. I, I don't see it, but it, it looks fine. Well, we'll be able to move this around. I don't care about it. So we're going to be ditching the poodle here, most likely. I mean... Yeah, we could grab this poodle, I suppose. I think that we should strut it together first. 
before we make any of these changes. And we're going to want an engine here as our landing engine. So that'll be fine. And our actual amount of meters per second here is not necessarily the absolute highest, but it should be okay, I think. I hope. <laughs> Especially with this fuel, I think we'll be fine. So what is our actual thrust to weight here? 0.24? Yeah, that's not super shocking. We may end up having to send a tanker later. Now that I think about it. But it should be reasonably okay. I mean, this is a lot of mass, for sure. But we're going to Gilly. So, fingers crossed on that one. We're going to be done with this burn in a minute 24 seconds. This is not going down at a 1 to 1 second ratio, is it? No, it's not. That's interesting. Why would that be happening then? So it's not actually a minute 18 seconds. It's like twice as long. Weird. That's really weird, actually. I'm not sure what's going on with that one. I do think strutting this together will help. But yeah, this is very bizarre to me that this is... Like, if we go to 2x time warp... Even this is slightly longer than a second per second. I don't know what's going on with that. This timer up here is correct. Okay, I'm coming out of the physics warp because awkwardness is ensuing. I don't know what's going on with this burn time number. It's very weird. What's our actual orbit look like? Okay. For now, I guess that's reasonable. Yeah, we're not moving this very much. It's like the game is confused about something. And I don't know what it's confused about. Maybe the fact that we're moving a station like this? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Or it thinks that we're only moving part of the station? I don't know. Regardless, it's very strange. This calculation is clearly off in some way. Very clearly. Okay, well, we can definitely... As, as long as we can get to, like, land on Gilly, it's fine. Um, even get to Eve orbit, it would be fine. We'd be able to pretty easily do a rendezvous there if we needed to. But clearly this calculation is flawed. There's no doubt about that. We should not be relying on this. We burned a lot of fuel here for needing to go 700 meters per second. Granted, our thrust to weight is low. There's no doubt about that. But I really thought this would be sufficient fuel. But looking at this, like, we're burning about a meter per second per second here. No, like two meters per second per second. This is not changing correctly. So this is actually like a 1400 meter per second burn. That's really strange. I have no explanation for that other than it's like a timing issue. I mean, there's some of that for sure. That's definitely a thing. Okay. At this point, we might want to just push it straight out and not do the gravity assist. I think it's mostly just the timing issue, honestly. Yeah, I, I think that's what's going on here. Is my guess. So let's just push out, not do the gravity assist, and we'll get this done. In theory. In which case, we should have been burning prograde the whole way, but we're basically here as it is. So we'll get rid of that, and we'll be pushing out of here momentarily. Okay, there we go. We'll call that good. I feel like there's a lot of wasted fuel there. But we do have this tank still. So, let's go ahead and freeze our physics here. And let's have Kim Kim EVA. 
At this point, we are going to climb on down. Or up, as the case appears to be. And we're going to try to strut these together a little bit. Okay. So obviously this is crooked. Should be fine. We'll go ahead and grab out of here a strut. And we're going to connect the strut from here to here. Should be fine. Then we're going to grab another strut from here to about here. I just want to add a little bit of stability here, right? So one more strut over here. Something like that. And then our final strut will go on this side. Something kind of like that. Okay. We do have additional struts available to us if we feel like that's necessary. And we can definitely see how crooked this is, but that's okay. It should be completely fine. At this point, I want to... Can we detach this part? Uh, we cannot detach the Clampatron docking port due to part attachments. I'm guessing that is due to these struts. So I'm going to move this strut over to here. This strut is going to move to, like, here. This one can be moved over here-ish. That didn't go. Okay. Let's try something like this. There we go. And anything else attached directly to the docking port? No. We can now just remove that. And this is a construction-only part. So we're just going to deposit this somewhere out over... Uh, where can we put it? Like, we don't need this part. I just want to drop it in space. Apparently, we can't do that. It's not allowing me to drop it in space and abandon the part. That's strange. Okay. We can put it there. It has to be attached to something. I suppose we could attach it to the... Uh, no, it wouldn't let us do that. Hmm. So where can we put this? Question. Can we put it there, flipped around, exit this, and then switch back to the ship, and then undock this? There we go. That's all, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to abandon that part. Perfect. So now we're going to go back to Kim Kim, and we are going to need to... Let go here. Go into this mode. RCS on. Um, RCS on. There we go. And we're just looking to come up over here and move this poodle. Any moment we get here. There we go. And we'll put the poodle here in space for now. Because we need to move it over this direction. Placing it there-ish. I don't think that was exactly where we want it to go. But uh, we can replace that. Make sure it's snapping. Place it onto this connection point. Like that. Cool. And now the poodle is placed where we want it. So now we can go in. And hopefully, things will be a little smoother for us from here on out. But if we have to do a refueling trip, that's fine. I'm not concerned about that. That would be entirely my own fault. Because that was definitely suboptimal. <laughs> There's no doubt about that one. So, I mean, this is all fine. Let's go ahead and head out over this direction. We can focus the sun for now. And target Eve. So at this ascending node, we're going to need to drop in a maneuver. And we're going to need to go anti-normal here. Like that. 332 meters per second. Now one thing I would like to do is I would like to move all of this fuel out. So we're going to pin open all of our other fuel tanks. 
so this tank and this tank and this tank. Cool. We're going to move all of that fuel out and then we're going to ditch this. We do not need that any longer. There's still this over here. Which we're treating as kind of a backup, but let's go ahead and warp forward here as we drain all of that fuel. There we go. So that fuel has been moved, and now we are going to undock this. We are releasing this fuel tank. It no longer needs to exist. It's not actually going anywhere. Yeah, it's just very slow. Okay. Cool. The next question is this fuel tank. We're not planning on landing with this tank. Can we fit everything else, or rather this fuel, can we fit that into these tanks? Uh, it's not flowing out, probably because we are warping at the moment. There we go. I'm not sure that we're really going to fit all of that fuel. Actually, we might. It's going to be close. That's very close. So, not quite there. Did I miss any fuel tanks? I don't believe that I did. I think we're good. So, we've just got a little bit of fuel here. I want to make sure that this engine is shut down. So let's get all of that out of here for now. This engine needs to be shut down. And then this engine gets activated. Assuming it's placed correctly, but it's, I think, as correct as we're going to get it. And we will control from here, and we'll align to our maneuver node. Beautiful. So we've shed a decent amount of weight here, but we need to shed more. So we're going to start this burn eventually, and we'll ditch this tank as soon as it runs out of fuel, which should be reasonably quickly. Okay, so at this point, it is time to warp forward, but it's also time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next episode. We are heading off to Gilly. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Kazarol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadowwolf, Mlohan80, Kentogen, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisol, Kadra, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.